Let me let it slide. We are good to go. All right, hey everyone, it's Chef Jason Morris. I am hanging out tonight with Colorado Beef Council in our backyard doing our first ever uh, Friday night family night with beef. So we thought we'd take an opportunity and hang out with you, do a little cooking at your house, show you some amazing beef recipes, really to get you uh, enjoying that family time you're spending at home with, uh, with your kids, with everyone, while we're all uh, enjoying a little quarantine time, right? So, hey, We've got an awesome recipe for you. If you go to Colorado Beef Council, uh, coloradobeef.com or cobeef.com, you can grab today's recipe. We have a little page set up for you where you can uh, find out all the cool things we're doing as well as a very cool uh, list that will let you into the world of Colorado beef uh, if you're looking to uh, shop local and spend a little time uh, supporting local agriculture. Colorado beef uh, producers, ranchers uh, do an amazing job of putting food on our tables and we're appreciating uh, them for that. So tonight, pretty cool. We've got um, a grilled recipe that you can also do in your oven, but we've taken this classic meatloaf, twisted it just a little bit to, uh, well, I'll show you. Come on in close. Let me give you a little sneak peek of what we've done. We've kind of turned them into some individual meatloafs uh, and we've also got a great way to show you how to cook once and eat twice. So we have a little bit of leftovers that we're gonna show you how to repurpose those as well into something fun if you have questions today uh, we know you will feel free to leave those down in the comment section tammy is hanging out at the computer ready to answer those for you and then when we are done with our live event today we're going to keep answering questions all week long up until next friday's family night with beef where we are doing uh, a little stir fried beef rice uh, so we're excited for that any questions rolling in are we good to go all right, so come on over here. Let's take a little walk through ingredients and I'll show you what we've got today. Come on close. We are starting off with uh, a pound and a half of some beautiful ground beef. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about ground beef and why this is so important. This is 80-20 ground beef and this is not the time to skimp on lean, right? If you do a 90%, 10% ground beef, that 10% fat during the cooking process is gonna wash away and it's gonna leave you with a pretty dry uh, ground beef, so uh, meatloaf. So if you've ever had questions about, why is my meatloaf dry? What is going on? Guess what? It all boils down to the ground beef you use. Today, we're using 80-20. So by the time we're done cooking, this 80-20 is actually gonna turn into about 90-10. All right, so that's ground beef. Fly back in here a little bit. We've got some herbs. You can use dried thyme. We've got a nice little herb blend. We've got some breadcrumbs, which are important because that's going to act as a binding agent. We have a little bit of ketchup uh, that we're going to mix in. Uh, we have some beautiful sh chopped garlic, a little bit of Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce, right? Some beautiful yellow onions chopped up and ready to go, and one egg. Pretty simple here. So if you come on close, we'll get nice and close in here so you guys can see all of our tips and tricks that we have. So what we've got here, I like to flatten the beef out first. That way, when it comes time to pour my breadcrumbs in and do all that, I get a chance to kind of see what's going on. Now, breadcrumbs. If you've ever wondered, again, why is my meatloaf so solid? It's like a, a Super Bowl. Um, too many breadcrumbs is a bad thing, right? So you want to add just enough breadcrumbs. And this recipe is perfect. Uh, this is like the third or fourth time I've made it this week. And the breadcrumbs are spot on. We added our egg. That's going to add some more fat in there. Uh, help with the binding. We're going to add half of the ketchup. Because we also saved the other half for glazing. Add our Worcestershire. We're going to add that garlic in there as well. Shake that guy out a little bit. Then... Take that glove off here real quick. Now we're gonna season it with just a little bit of fresh ground pepper. And if you wanna add a barbecue twist, this is a great time to uh, throw in one of your favorite barbecue rubs, or if you want to uh, mix it up and do a little bit of a Cajun rub, you can as well. But we have salt and pepper in there. And we'll get gloved back up here. Now, come on in, we'll show you this part here. So again, I like to keep everything flat. Now what we're gonna do is actually go in here with our hands and get that mixed up really well. We wanna incorporate all those breadcrumbs, right? We wanna get that egg mixed in there. We wanna get those breadcrumbs mixed in there because what's gonna happen is, if you look at this now, you may think, yeah, you know what? That looks really squishy or that looks really wet. Don't worry about it because we wanna get those breadcrumbs mixed in there, give them a chance to activate a little bit. So they'll absorb some of that moisture and this ground beef uh, meatloaf mix tighten up. 
pretty, pretty nicely. And don't forget, too, if you have questions, leave those questions in the comments section below. Tammy is standing by at the computer. We'll be answering those while we're live. And then after we're live, uh, we'll go through for the next week and answer all your questions before we get ready to join in next week's Friday Night Family Time with Beef, where we are rocking out some amazing beef fried rice. All right. So now what I do, we're going to go ahead and leave this. We're gonna let this sit for just a couple minutes because we want that uh, those breadcrumbs to bind up. So let me take my gloves off here real quick. Come on over to the grill. I'll show you where we're at now. We started these earlier for you so we could have them done. So this was a batch I made earlier. It takes about 45 to 50 minutes for these to cook, right? And what we're gonna do, let me set this to the side here real quick. We wanna check their temperature. So we'll go right into the middle. Look at that, we're looking for that 155, 165 temperature, and that is perfect. Now, what we'll do the last couple minutes is go ahead and glaze. Sugar burns um, relatively light temperature, so if you've got these on the grill, keep in mind if you baste them towards the very end, maybe the last five minutes, that sugar is gonna glaze and you won't have any issues with it burning. All right. Now, also, I'm doing this on the grill. You can absolutely do this in your oven. The temperatures remain the same. So if you're doing uh, 350 degrees on the grill, 350 degrees in your oven work the same as well. So we'll let these guys glaze for just a couple minutes. Keep in mind, this guy right here, this was leftover. So we actually, <laughs> we've been eating meatloaf quite a bit this week. That was a leftover meatloaf from last week. So we are reheating it now, not last week, from yesterday. Uh, we're reheating that to make some beautiful, beautiful meatloaf sliders. So let's let this guy do its thing. Ella, come back over here onto that, and let's show everyone how we form these little mini meatloafs. Now, you can easily do this in one big loaf. You can separate it, do it in two if you wanna do it in a loaf pan. Uh, I like to do them in smaller portions. Uh, they cook a little bit faster. Uh, they eat better, and I think it's kind of cool if you have a family of four, everybody gets their own little mini meatloaf for the day. So come on in and show them what we do. So I basically take this meatloaf, right, and I'm going to cut it, make a mark for half, and then half, so now I know I've got quarters. And then I'll break that off. Don't mix this too much. What happens if you mix it too much is you'll also get a very firm meatloaf. So just enough to form it, and that is it right there. What do you think? Not good? Looks good. I'm getting a nod of approval from my camera person. So now grill is preheated. A couple different things I have. You can put them here on a plancha, which is like a flat top if you have that on your grill, or I have a nice big grill grate there as well. So we will keep adding these guys in. And again, like I said, we just round those out nicely, make some individual meatloafs, get in there nice and close on that. Perfect. All right, come on over in this guy. Again, we're not over mixing it. We're just trying to get this formed up really nice. Set that right there. And last but not least, this guy here. And you can see if you get nice and close down there, you slide by that, you can see that bubbling and sizzling and doing its thing. We're getting a nice sear on there. That's gonna help us uh, get this beef started off beautifully. Well, let's put this guy, let's do this. Let's wiggle these guys over a little bit. And we'll put that guy right there. So there you have it, super easy, right? Uh, it doesn't take a lot of ingredients. It definitely didn't take us a lot of time to mix it up. And the beautiful part of it is we uh, are into meatloaf pretty fast. So let's do this here. I'll show you my repurposing, right? So let's say it is time to uh, have meatloaf for tonight. So if I want meatloaf for tonight, here's what I'm doing. I'm gonna serve this little guy up here there so there's our meatloaf that we made for today perfect goes great with some amazing uh, Colorado mashed potatoes I think we've had it with pretty much everything this week we had it with rice one night we had it with mashed potatoes as well but there is your meatloaf for tonight super fast super easy we mixed it uh, cooked these guys for about 45 minutes or so but now here's the magic come back over a little bit of uh, sweet Hawaiian buns. We'll throw those guys on and get them toasted off here real quick. And then, well, what should we do here? Let's do this. Let's put that guy up there. Let's take our leftover 
right? Because we're repurposing. The beauty of this is cook once, eat twice. I'm a huge fan of that. So, Ella, let's do this. What I'll do now when I'm getting ready to make our meatloaf sandwiches, which are so beautiful for lunch, a uh, great way to get your kids fed for lunch, good for snacks when they're done with their learning for the day. We cut those guys up real quick. Let's do this. Slide our buns back up here just a little bit. We'll let those guys warm up. Then what I'll do is set these back on the grill. A little bit of my ketchup glaze again. All right, got those guys glazed up nice. Get them all set and ready to go. You can see I'm already starting to grill up nicely. So we'll get those set. And again, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to leave your questions down in the comment section. Uh, we will get those answered for you today. And then for the next week, before next week's beef event next Friday, we will uh, make sure we get them answered as well. So recap of what we've got. This is our meatloaf that is now cooking and ready to go. We're gonna get that at 375 degrees and close the lid, let that cook. It takes about 45 minutes or so. Then we've got our leftover. Eat, cook once, eat twice, which we're gonna set up for you here in just a second. And then don't forget, you can head over to cobeef.com, grab the recipe and take a little shot of that recipe. We've got that beautiful classic meatloaf recipe for you, all set and ready to go. You can also find that on beefitswhatsfordinner.com, which is gonna be a great resource. Then, while you are over at CO Beef, don't forget to check out our link that we have that will connect you with Colorado ranchers who are ready to support you with some amazing Colorado beef. Uh, we've got a nice little list that'll let you into everybody that's selling beef. So you can uh, stock up, load those freezers up and uh, shop local, eat local and stay local. So, all right, you ready for the reveal of these? All right, I think we're good here. Buns are toasty. Let's come over and check this out. So these are the ones that we have cooking from the recipe we just made. These guys in the back right here are the ones that are finished that we cooked a little bit earlier. And then right here, we've got those beautiful meatloaf sandwiches that we're getting ready to now eat twice with our leftover meatloaf. What do you think of that? Pretty, pretty styling and set and ready to go. All right, so again, do a little rundown here. Here is today's recipe. Like I said, you can grab that down at uh, coloradobeef.com, cobeef.com, where you can get that. And thank you so much to the uh, Colorado ranching and producing families that have uh, participated in this today and supported our fun little backyard cooking. That's right. This is our first Friday night live with beef. So we're hanging out. Uh, let us know also what you'd like to see us cook. Is there anything that you've like always wanted to know how to cook, but now you need a little walkthrough, we can help you with that as well. And then don't forget, next week, we will see you right back here, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. We are doing beef fried rice. So we're actually gonna fire up a charcoal grill, put our wok in there, and make a fantastic rice dish. The great thing about that as well, another one of those cook once, eat twice deals as well. So let's take one more look here, see what we've got. That looks pretty fantastic. I definitely uh, am excited for that. All right, it is time. You know what it's time for? It's time for the taste test. So here we are with our uh, beef sandwich. Look at that. Tasty little juicy little morsel. That is such a fantastic way to end my Friday. I'm looking forward to those guys sitting on top of some mashed potatoes as well. And I think we are set to go. Again, Excuse me again, don't forget to head down below, leave all your comments, leave your questions as well. We'll be sure to answer those for the next week. We will see you back here next Friday, six o'clock mountain time. And once again, a big, huge thank you to Colorado's farming and ranching families for supporting our economy and really helping provide us with fantastic food on our plates to feed our family. I'm Chef Jason Morris, Colorado Beef Council. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next Friday night 6 p.m. for some amazing beef fried rice.